Hi there, I'm Mike Thornton. This video tutorial forms part of the process of setting up the free Room EQ wizard ready to take measurements of each of the speakers in my 7.1.4 Dolby Atmos system in my studio. Then to turn those measurements into a set of EQ filters and then finally transfer that data into the Dabman software to set up the SPQ card in my interface. Once we have the full set of measurements for a speaker, we can move on to the EQ filter stage. Open one of your measurement files. And for this video, I'm going to use the front right. And with the average selected in the list on the left hand side, click on the EQ button up here in the toolbar. And then once that window opens, check that the title at the top does refer to the average file and not one of the individual measurement files. Because we're not interested in the waterfall section, we can click on the arrow here and expand the EQ filter section to fill the whole window. Click on the gear wheel icon to open the trace options window. Click on the smoothing drop down menu to display the different smoothing options available. Now the Room EQ Wizard manual recommends that you use the variable smoothing or the VAR smoothing as it says for responses that are going to be equalized which of course is what we're doing. So we'll select that smoothing option which as you can see simplifies the response curve significantly. Match the other settings to what I have here with the fill filter responses, show each filter, fill each filter and show filter numbers so that they're all checked. And once you're set, click the gear wheel icon again to close the trace options window. Now we're going to work our way down the options on the right hand side. From the top, check that the equalizer is set to generic. This is the closest we can get to the filters used on the SPQ card. But as you can see, there are a number of standard units listed. So if that's what you're going to be using, you can use one of those options. Close the equalizer tab and open the target settings. Where it says subwoofer, click on the drop down menu and select full range speaker as we should be using full range speakers rather than bass managed wherever possible. Bring the LF cutoff closer to where the speaker naturally starts to roll off. In my case, I'm going to go for around 30 Hertz. Leave the add room curve unchecked unless you want to use a target curve and you can enter that here if you do. Next, we'll need to set the target level so that it's in the middle of the curve so as to minimize the amount of boosting or cutting by the filters. You can do it by eye, but it's better if you use the calculate target level from response option and then let REW do the work here. Moving on to the filter tasks, make sure that the match range is set to 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Now we come to an area of contention. Whether you attempt to use EQ to fill the troughs in a response curve or not. Some say not at all, so they would set both the individual max boost and overall max boost to 0 dB. Let's do that and see what happens when we match the response to the target. And then we'll look at the filters. And as you can see, all the filters are cutting. There are no boosts. If we go the other way and set both to say 10 dBs, then you can see that the predictive curve is pretty well flat. But when you look at what the filters are doing, you can see that there's around an 8 dB boost at 125 Hz and a 10 dB boost around 250 Hz. If you were to apply these filters, both of which would have a significant impact on the system headroom. So I've kind of chosen a sort of middle ground and gone with 5 dBs and 2 dBs as a sensible compromise 
as this seems to flatten out the smaller dips but leave the bigger dips alone. Having settled on the settings for individual max boost and overall max boost, I've also chosen to aim for a 1 dB tolerance with the flatness target. I've also checked the allow narrow filters below 200 Hz because this allows Room EQ Wizard to create filters to counter room resonances. And then I've also checked this new option to vary the max Q above 200 Hz so that there isn't a sudden transition in the width of the filters when we get above 200 Hz. Because we enabled the show filters in the trace options, we can see graphically what the filters are doing and how many filters are being used looking at the numbers across the top. To see what they're doing numerically, then we can click this EQ buttons filter to see what they're doing. Note that if you have, like me, a Matrix Studio and you find that Room EQ Wizard has used more than 16 filters, then you can go in here and disable the filters from 17 and above and then rerun the match response to the target and that should limit the software to using no more than 16 filters. You could read off the filter settings from this window, but I think there's an easier way, and that's to use the export filter settings as text, as it makes it easier to set up the SPQ card filters in Dabman. You can also add some notes, like I've used 5 dB for the individual max boost and 2 dB for the overall max boost, then click OK, and then name the text file with the speaker name and save it where you want it. And this produces a text file that we can use to set up the EQ filters in Dabman. Open Dabman and enable the monitor section if necessary, and then click on the EQ button to open the EQ section for your main monitor path. You'll see that clicking on each of the speaker buttons will display the EQ settings for that speaker. So you can see that I've already done the left and the center speakers. So let's move on to the front right speaker and I'll show you what we can do. Open the filter settings text file that you created in REW and arrange the windows so that you can see both the EQ section in Dabman and the text file. Now I prefer to highlight each line in the text file so that I don't misread the table and enter the wrong numbers for the wrong filter. Click the Add EQ in Dabman and you'll see the default settings for EQ1 will display. Click the Frequency Numeric field and then type in the frequency that you have in the text file. In this case, 87.2 Hz and then hit Enter. Click on the Gain field and type in the gain amount from the text file, in this case minus 2.4 dBs, and hit Enter. Now click on the Q field and type in the Q amount, in this case 10.183. Now note that Dabman will round up or down some of the data you enter and also that the maximum Q is 10. Once you've done the first filter, it's a matter of working your way through all the other filter settings until you've got that speaker set up and it'll look something like this. Then when you've done your first speaker, you'll need to repeat the process until you've set up all the EQ filters for every speaker channel. Job done. You will find much more information about this and the other stages of the process on Production Expert. See you again soon.